Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today what we're working on is framing up a pool shed. And um, what we're going to be doing is framing up a door and a window. Um, I figured that would be a good idea to do that wall because it'll show you how to, you know, set up your studs, set up a door for a shed and a window for a shed. And it's just important to keep in mind that this is not uh, traditional framing for a house. So you may need some headers and things like that if you uh, frame up a house. I'm making a complete series on building this shed. And uh, if you check my channel, you'll see all these different videos. So let's get started. So the first cut we're going to make is on our bottom plate, which happens to be pressure treated. So I measured it out and marked it. I'm not cutting it with my compound miter saw because I, I don't have my stand out here to hold the other end. So I'm just going to cut this with a skill saw and you can use a speed square and get a nice square cut on here. So you just line that up on your board, line up with your line and make your cut. There's another way to get a square cut without even using a square. I'll show you that next. Now I'm going to show you a technique for cutting this and not using a square and getting a square cut. On your uh, skill saw, if you look at the table, all you have to do is keep the table parallel with this edge of the board, and that will give you a nice square cut. And we'll put a square on there, and you can see it's very good. It's not perfect, but it's close enough for framing. Now up on the table I have my bottom plate on the bottom, my top plate on the top, and what we're going to do is we're going to clamp these two together and go down and mark it, okay? Uh, you know, this is not a production job, so there's other ways to do it. I'm not a professional carpenter by any means. So I'm just going through and I have that clamped and you'll notice that I kept the clamp proud a little bit so that I can fit my tape measure underneath it for when I need to measure. So I don't have blueprints but I just went through made a little sketch so I know what I'm doing and then I can refer to that when I lay this thing out. So I'll be looking at that when I go through and lay things out. On the end of the board, you're going to have a full stud here. So I've marked an inch and a half on both boards. Put an X where the stud goes. And uh, I'm also, I'm going to put a star here so that when I lay out the wall and nail it together, I'll make sure both those stars are on the right hand side to keep things lined up right. So starting at the end here, uh, our first stud's going to be part of the doorway. Okay, so the door is going to be pretty close to the corner. Remember, you need to leave room for the outside trim around your door and also a corner if you're putting on vinyl siding. So your corner cap. Um, I'm leaving on the outside, I'll have about 13 inches. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in, and I figured this out on my plan, about nine and a quarter. So we'll mark that there. And then we're going to come back an inch and a half, we'll mark that, and that stud there is going to be our jack stud. So we'll put a J there and a J there, and then we're going to have a king stud right next to it. So this is a K and a K here, and we'll take our speed square and we can mark these. So there's our jack. And there's our king, and we're going to mark the other side of that just to make sure that we get that right. So those will go right there. I'm going to be using a steel door, and I'm going to end up cutting it down because I only have about six foot three inch walls. So those doors are exactly 36 inches. So uh, we're going to leave a 36 inch opening and actually the doors are a quarter inch shorter than that. So I'm just going to go out 36 from that jack stud and I'm going to mark my next jack stud 
over here and I'll bring you over this way so we're gonna go one and a half mark that jack and then we're gonna go another one and a half and this will be our king so that one's a king that one's a jack that one's a king that one's a jack and we'll transfer those lines down So for this 36 inch opening, I've designed it so that I can take uh, two studs and stand them upright like this, and that'll become my header. So we have our doorway laid out, and now I've got to start making sure that we have our studs on uh, every 16 inches. So if you notice this 48 is falling on the king stud here on the left side of the doorway but it's not centered it would be better if that were there so what I could do is just put another stud over here but instead of doing that what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna move my doorway over like three-eighths of an inch and that'll save a stud and that's really the way I should have done it to begin with. So a little mistake here. And what I'm going to do to correct this is I'm, I'm going to mark these lines now with uh, a different color or a Sharpie. I was able to go through with a marker and fix everything. Where that clamp is, that's about the end of our doorway. So now what we're going to do, so we get this right, is I'm going to measure down 48 inches and I'm going to mark right where the next sheet of plywood's going to go. So from the center of the king stud, we're going to go out 48 and we'll mark that. I'm going to need a stud there. Now we're going to figure out right where our window goes. I'm figuring I'm going to center it, so I just put a clamp on here so I can pull my tape. We're at 91 and a half, so we need to figure out what half of 91 and a half is. So the way I do that is I'll take 90, half of 90 is 45, 90, add an inch to it, half of an inch is 45 and a half, and half of half an inch would be a quarter. So it's going to be 45 and a half plus a quarter, which is 45 and three quarters. So that'll be the center point for our window. Um, a little tip for you. You can actually take your ruler or your tape measure. You can fold it in half. Something, where are you guys? Right here, 90. There's 90. So half of 90 I don't know how well you can see it, but it's showing me 45 down there on the end. So, what was that? 90, 91 and a half. If you look at that, you can see it's 45 and three quarters down there dead center. So, that's a neat way to uh, figure out um, half of something on a tape measure. Or at least give you a rough idea of around what it should be. I figured out where the window goes. Right here is the center, and it's only like five eighths of an inch from the stud. So we can just center the window on this stud. Okay, uh, you know, I'm kind of making this up as I go, and no one's going to notice that it's off a hair. Um, so, anyhow, our window, the opening is 30 and a half. So, uh, 15 and a quarter from the center of this stud is where we want to be. So I'm going to mark the end of our tape right here. And now we're going to go down to the other end and we're going to mark our 30 and a half, which is the width of our window. And we're just going to put studs right there. And as I said, I already figured out where the plywood's going to end. It's going to end right here at that 48-inch mark. The window is now laid out. This is the center of it, so there will be a cripple above it. About, I think about six or seven-inch cripple. And then 
here, I, you can see I marked it with a W, so I know that that's uh, a full stud, because I've been, uh, if you've been following my videos, I've been scabbing together some some studs with uh, plywood, so i got to use a, a full stud there. And now at this point, since I moved this window over a hair just to center it, what that does is that opens up right from my original door king stud. We can go 16, we can mark it at 64, and then go three quarters each way. There'll be a stud there, and you'll see the window king stud falls right on 80, which is where my next stud is. And then here's where the plywood will fall. And then the end of the window, and then our last stud will be here. And as I said, we're, we're doing 16 inches on center. Sometimes when you frame, you do 24. As I said, the framing here we're doing is, uh, you know, pretty standard. 16 inch, at least in America, uh, on center, okay? And we're going through, we're marking our studs. But um, just so you know, if you want to put more than 16 inches between studs to save material you could do like 24 on center um, but if that's too far most people probably don't know that there's a black diamond on the tape and it's at 19 and 3 16 if if you put a stud centered on the black diamonds and the tape continues to give you these when you get down to eight foot the size of a plywood sheet you can see well now the diamond's not black but it has a diamond there so that's actually a dimensional increment that you can use for framing as well i've completed the uh layout here i got everything labeled so i know what's going on it's nice and neat and everything's good and parallel now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to chop the studs to the right length. Uh, they're all going to be six foot studs except for the jacks and the cripples. So I'm just going to watch my plans and go through and cut all that stuff to the right length. But I think what I'll do is I'll call this video layout for a shed door and window. And my next video will show you uh, how to nail this thing together and cut all the studs and that. So I'm going to end this one here. Hopefully you liked it um, and found it helpful. Uh, anyone can do this. It's not that hard. Just take your time, lay it out, check things. I don't do it every day. So, you know, I had to sit down and go through it just like you would have to. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, I have some real good news to report. Um, yesterday, my son finally finished up his leukemia treatment. He's done taking medicine, and uh, he's in complete remission, and hopefully he stays that way. So thanks for all the support, all the prayers, and all the kind words throughout the last three and a half years. It's been a long journey, and uh, I just wanted to thank everyone, and... Uh, this is the greatest Father's Day gift that I could possibly have. So stay tuned for the next video. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up. Thanks.